In the last podcast, we explored the foundations of stakeholder attitudes. In this one, we will still focus on stakeholder attitudes, but more directly focus on the factors that influence their evaluations of crisis severity and blame based on the evaluations of an organization's competence, commitment, and clear association towards managing those issues. In short, we'll begin to focus on those issue-related factors that most influence how stakeholders evaluate an organization's performance and intentions during crises. Most importantly, we'll begin to focus most directly on how these issue-related factors influence stakeholder emotions and let us understand how their strong emotional reactions are likely to affect an organization in crisis. Understanding the situation is essential for selecting the best response strategy. The literature defines the attribution of blame for a crisis as a central factor to determining appropriate organizational response. In fact, Coombs Situational Crisis Communication Theory, or SCCT, assumes that people make attributions for the causes of negative and unexpected events, and then they experience an emotional reaction which serves as a motivation for their own actions, their reactions to it. This helps us to better understand how stakeholders will evaluate the crisis as well as the organization. Chapter three introduced the types of judgments that stakeholders make about an organization's connection to issues relevant to a crisis. Chapter six identified severity and blame in the context of evaluating the types of crisis that an organization can face. However, here we focus on severity and blame in the context of how stakeholders make evaluations about organizations in crisis and how that influences their judgments about the organization's fitness and intentions for crisis recovery. Crisis severity describes the perception of the importance of the crisis. The more severe the crisis is judged to be, the more that stakeholders are likely to pay attention to it and believe that it'll affect them directly. Crisis severity can also affect the selection of crisis responses and the crisis responsibility attributions. So severity can be considered both in terms of the real damage in a crisis, as well as from a stakeholder's perspective, the perceived damage or risk created by the crisis. Just as in the context of persuasion, severity connects susceptibility in order to produce a stakeholder's overall judgment about the threat that they actually face from a crisis. In part, we can think about blame attribution as the potential threat to an organization's reputation. Reputational threat is a multi-step process combining evaluations of severity and blame attribution, followed by considering the situational intensifiers like the organization's history of crisis and its reputation. For example, previous research suggests that higher perceptions of blame attribution results in greater reputational damage for crises. All of this generates emotions on the part of stakeholders, which thus influences their understanding of the situation, as well as their interpretation of the organization's crisis response. When the perception towards the organization is more negative, the greater responsibility is attributed on the organization, and so the greater reputational threat is caused by the crisis. Better understanding factors like these that serve as intensifiers to a crisis is vital to better understanding the attribution of blame and the reputational risk that crises carry with them. If we take what we know about blame, severity, competence, commitment, and clear association all into account, then we should have a pretty good picture of what frustrates stakeholders during crises.
I've already talked about crises as emotional experiences for stakeholders. And not surprisingly, crises can generate a lot of anger towards organizations. In fact, it's one of the primary emotions investigated in crisis communication, and it turns out we know a lot about how organizations will anger stakeholders, and we know what they're going to be angry about. Jin's research, for example, clearly indicates that perceptions of the controllability of a crisis is likely to generate stakeholder anger. The more perceived control that an organization is believed to have, the more likely the crisis is to produce anger because the organization is seeing as being able to have prevented the crisis in these cases. Thus, the question of an organization's perceived competence is also likely to affect stakeholder anger as one indication of perceived control. Likewise, in these situations, we can also see the, a clear indicator of whether stakeholders are angry, that they're more likely to blame the organization for the crisis. So we can think of perceived control as being a combination of blame attribution and competence. If stakeholders believe the organization could have reasonably controlled the situation that led to the crisis, and that makes them angry, then the degree to which they feel helpless only intensifies the situation. Think about it this way. It's bad enough knowing that we cannot do anything about a situation, but knowing the situation could have been avoided if those who had the ability to change it, that would just drove most people to the point of frustration, to put it mildly. There are also other causes and indicators of stakeholder anger towards organizations that's been found in previous research. For example, increased exposure to a crisis also increased the likelihood of stakeholder anger at the organization in crisis. These findings suggest that organizations with a history of crises were also more likely to be met with greater levels of stakeholder anger, particularly if the crisis was viewed as more controllable. This means that the more that a crisis is visible or in the news, the more likely it's to generate negative emotions. If you're thinking the media can have a big impact, you're right. But hold that thought. We'll come back to that in a podcast on agenda setting. Not only does more exposure potentially create more anger, but previous beliefs about the organization are most likely to influence current attitudes about the company, and that's even after a crisis starts. So knowing what a stakeholder's attitudes about the organization or even the industry were should help us know how likely they're angry to be. Put these all together and the research has found pretty clearly that crises often create a negative communication dynamic, suggesting that two of the critical indicators of stakeholder anger could be negative word of mouth, also called NWAM. As a result, we can see oftentimes a reduced purchase intention after a crisis. And so when we talk about purchase intention, you know, keep in mind that we're broadly speaking about people's likelihood of engaging with an organization. So we could be talking about donation intention with charities or any other types of intentions for different types of organizations.